We've got the entire Interstate 48 shut down. A chase turned shootout on I-40 between officers and a murder suspect on the run. It, it is a day that I will, I will live with the rest of my life. As I tell people, there is nothing routine about this job. We reconstructed the shooting scene in the heart of downtown Knoxville last July. We take you to this overhead shot that shows where a mix of law enforcement officers from troopers to deputies ended up on I-40 eastbound at the end of the chase. In the driver's seat of that SUV is that wanted murder suspect on the run from Florida. Tonight, for the first time, we hear the review of that gunfight from the sheriff and the top prosecutor in Knox County. By the book, the judgment by the Knox County Sheriff reviewing the actions of his deputies during a miles-long chase turned frenetic gunfight along I-40 in downtown Knoxville. What we found was they, they did what they should have done, and uh, they did that in a professional manner. After a trooper forced the murder suspect to spin out, the exchange of gunfire between that suspect and five law enforcement officers included almost 70 shots and lasted roughly 12 seconds. Most gunfights go anywhere from one second to three and a half to five seconds. What That's do you how. think about the reaction that we're seeing in real time here? You know, I sit here and, and I'm sure that they do, that every time they see that, those chills run up down your arm and down your back uh, because there's not, I, I don't think there's one officer that ever wants to think and be involved in a gunfight. We train for it, but that's the one thing that we hope that we never have to do. It's law enforcement that we look to to apprehend that potential suspect. Uh, you can't leave someone like that that's that dangerous out in the community, someone that you know that has committed a homicide and could potentially commit other homicides. So it's um, what we depend on law enforcement to do every day. Knox County District Attorney General Sharm Allen ruled the actions of the deputies justified. She made that call almost four months after the shootout and only after reviewing witness statements and 100 plus pages of evidence in the final report from the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. The location and the number of shots fired in this case. What do you know about that and what did you find in your investigation? Once the gunfire ensued, um, clearly our um, suspect fired first and he fired 16 shots at the officers and the officers returned fire with 52 shots. So that was a very high number of shots in a gunfire exchange. Ultimately, you're the one who has to say the actions of the officers were appropriate in the circumstances. You found that was the case. Correct, yes. Anything else to add about that that people should understand? Um, and so the Supreme Court cases give us guidance on how to apply that law, that we should always look at everything through the lens of a reasonable officer involved in this type of activity in real time. We can't sit back and Monday morning quarterback or look back with 2020 hindsight. Uh, we have to put ourselves in the shoes of a reasonable officer at the time under the stresses and pressures um, in real time of what's happening. What I have learned in reviewing cases over the years is the speed at which an officer's regular day can go from absolutely nothing to um, an adrenaline rush and a life-threatening situation in just seconds is just really something that's hard, I think, for the normal person to process. Um, when people see this and say, why did they fire so many rounds, what do you say? However many rounds it takes to stop the threat. You hear people say, well, they shoot to kill. We do not shoot to kill. We train to, sh to stop the threat, period. That's it. The one thing is, as I tell people, there's nothing routine about this job. Will you use this video in training at all? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it shows the things that need to be done, should be done, and doing it the right way. Fortunate. That's the word the sheriff uses to explain the events of July 14th, 2020. Fortunate, the deputies did all they could to protect themselves, fellow officers, and the public. Obviously, uh, when you're put in that situation, a lot of things go out the window, and uh, but they handled themselves very professional and dealt with the threat that they were they were handed in front of them. Uh, I think that we all expect the unexpected at times, 
and, and that's when it happens. And just like that, that evening right there, that, that's what happened. Online right now, you can hear from shooting witnesses and a deputy involved in that gunfight at WBIR.com. We have also posted all of the body cam footage on the WBIR YouTube page. Robin.